right here with Jeff Mayweather. Uh, Jeff, normally we have fun with our interviews, but today I want to talk to you about something a little more serious uh, broke this morning. Uh, Celestino Caballero, a guy that you would train back when he was world champion, a guy you worked with for several years, unfortunately got caught up in a little, uh, a little incident down there in Panama where apparently he had some uh, cocaine in his car, uh, got pulled over by the police. First of all, um, let me ask you, how, how was the news broken to you? How did you hear about that? Well, actually, I, I got the news early this morning, probably before anybody else got it, because um, I knew it hadn't hit any of the boxing sites or anything at that time. And basically, um, a good friend of his uh, inboxed me on uh, Facebook, uh, letting me know about the situation and also attached the article um, to it. And uh, I, but the article was in actually in Spanish, so I couldn't read the article. But she, she's very, um, she's very, um, what is it? What is the word I'm looking for? Um, anyway, well, she speaks English very well. Bilingual. So um, yeah, bilingual. And um, and so she was able to convey everything that happened, you know, to me. And so um, and she was just basically saying how sad and she was about it. And, um, of course, I mean, I was saddened as well. And it's a situation in which me, with the time I spent with Celestino, I never saw that side of him. So I don't know, you know, because you can be around a person for years and not really know um, what they're doing, you know. But, I mean, as a person, you know, in which I still I consider him a very good friend, not just, not just a, a guy that I train, but a actually a guy that I, I consider, you know, a friend, and we'll have a friendship for the rest of our lives. You know, we were blessed and fortunate to win a world title together, but, you know, it was just, it was a little, it was a lot more than that, you know, to me. Well, I think that's a situation in which, um, Sassoon is a guy who's truly, truly loved in the, in the country of Panama. I mean, he, you know, he still hang out with the guys he grew up with. You know, he goes to downtown in the dirtier areas and things like that and, and give out money and, you know, I mean, he's a great guy. I think he's he's probably even loved. He probably don't have the status of a Roberto Duran, but I think as a champion from Panama, he's probably loved even, you know, I think even more. It, because of the fact that, you know, um, he never forgot where he came from. And he still, like I said, he still gives to that. And, you know, but the other thing is this. It's a situation, the second I was told that that happened, immediately, what came to mind was that he was set up. Not saying set up in the terms of, not set, saying set up in terms of, somebody giving him that, or somebody planting it. Not like that. I'm saying he was set up in a sense where somebody told to let the police know that Celestino had something because three times I was, we were stopped in, um, in Panama because Celestino drives super fast. You know, has no respect for traffic and so on and so forth, but you know, but um, it was, and I mean, and at this time, he was driving a car that had no license plates, you know. And um, so he was a guy, they stopped him. The second they saw who he was, they let him go. So it's, it's almost like, why would the police stop him this time? You know, after me seeing this happen at least three or four different times, why would they, you know, all of a sudden stop him and search and everything else? When you're talking about a guy that was driving a car with no license plate on it at all, you know. And like I said, I mean, so it seems was a guy who's so loved that once I went to Panama and, and lost my passport, I think I left it, somehow I left it in Vegas. And um, went there, went there and got, um, you know, stuck at the airport. And 
you know, it's a situation in which, of course, once you get, you come to another country and you don't have your passport, automatically you're going to be flown back home. But I was fortunate enough for Celestino to have a relationship, you know, with the most powerful man in um, Panama, the president. And he actually called the president, let them know what was going on, and, you know, the president um, graciously, you know, allowed me into the country without, without my passport, you know. And um, I still, you know, and, and we had a funny, you know, like a little funny encounter about that because, like I told him, I said, so, you know, I said, if you came here and you didn't have your passport, you're going home for sure because I don't know Obama. I can't call him. <laughs> But, but um, you know, like I said, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very sad situation, you know, for a guy who, who actually, you know, is a good person, you know. And I don't know his situation as to why he did it, but I know that um, he have a couple businesses that, you know, that he has already in, um, down in Panama. So, and he's just recently retired, so I don't think that. It don't seem like it should be for the lack of money, but I don't know. I mean, you never know a person's situation. I just know that he had like a little taxi cab company. He had a, um, a gym, kind of like a, a family fitness or something like that, and um, and and it was doing and it was doing well. And he also be was an analyst, you know, on TV. So I mean, there was income coming in. So I don't, I can't see why he would need to do this, but I don't know. Let, let me ask you this. Um, a lot of athletes, you know, they're, you're still young in your life. You know, he's, you know, not 40 yet. So is it a case potentially where, you know, you saw him at the end of his career. Was it a case maybe where he needs something to fill that adrenaline from fighting? You know, fighting, you have all that, the adrenaline, kind of the same thing. I imagine doing something like that. It's kind of an adrenaline rush maybe. You know, you think maybe it was he didn't know how to transition out of, out of, you know, being a professional athlete, maybe he, you know, chose the wrong way and went, did something there? Um, that could be the case because one thing about boxing is this. You know, he's not the first boxer. He definitely won't be the last because the one thing about boxing is this. You know, like you said, the rush. And the one thing about boxing is this. You're making, you know, you're making... If you were a champion, fortunate enough to be like as make it as far as him, you know you're you getting you getting hundred thousand dollars checks, you know, or even more, you know, and um, so all of a sudden, I mean, when you walk away from the sport, that's not coming no more, you know, and you do have to make some type of transition, but being in that mindset of, you know, I'm used to this. This is what I'm used to. You know, you can easily be persuaded, you know, to to actually start doing that. And you get a taste of it, and you end up finding yourself, you know, doing something that you really shouldn't be doing, and maybe end up getting, being caught, and, you know, it's going to cost you, you know, time away from your family, time away from your loved ones, time away from your friends, everybody. You know, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's very sad for for me to see that, being that, you know, I was, you know, a major part of his career toward the end. You know, until I got sick, you know, um, I mean, I was there for him, you know, all the way. And, um, you know, and this, like I said, I mean, we have a friendship, you know, and, you know, and I'm, I'm praying that, you know, he gets out of the situation, you know, unless, you know, um, because I don't, I don't want a person just to, to get away because they're my friend, you know. So, I mean, if he did it, hopefully he'll, you know, have to, you know, pay what it, you know, pay for what he did, you know. But um, at the same time, I mean, you know, I do feel really bad for him. And, and like you said, I don't know if it's just that adrenaline rush or it's the fact that he's just used to, you know, he got used to making that kind of money and all of a sudden... It just came to a, a sudden stop. A sudden stop. So, I mean, a lot of boxers do that. It's not just it's not just Celestino, but there's a lot of boxers. The second they walk away from the ring, 
go straight to drugs because they're used to that money. They're used to making 10000 or 20000 or whatever the case may be. It's a lot more than going to, to work a nine to five. And so a lot of people don't know how to make, a lot of boxers don't know how to make that transition. So that's what they do. They take the next alternative. And most of the time it's drugs. All right, man. Well, we'll, uh, you know, we'll keep, keep up to date with the situation. We'll talk to you more as need be. But just any final words for uh, the whole situation and what you think about Celestino? Well, I mean, basically, you know, I'm hoping the best for Celestino and, and certainly for his family as well. And um, and it, it just, you know, it just taints everything that he accomplished. I mean, the guy was a five-time world champion, and, you know, and at the end of the day, his legacy may be that he got caught with, you know, this cocaine would probably overshadow everything that he did as a boxer.